was served as a veteran in World War II. During the war, we were segregated. Now this part you don't read in the books. See, they hide all this. They thought that the black troops were going to take over America. You couldn't even buy a loaf of bread. How are you going to take over the country? You did all the dirty work. You helped cook, you drove the trucks. In other words, you were second-class citizen. And that's what it amounted to. Yeah, that's me. I was a little fella then, wasn't I? Well, I told my mother not to put that shirt on me, a hole in that sweater. She knew better. <laughs> How old are you now? 82. 92. 93. 93, I get them mixed up. I'm 93. I was born in 1925 in Lewes, Delaware, L-E-W-E-S, Delaware. I was drafted at age 18. I got a letter from the uh, government that you have been drafted. Now, what I couldn't figure out, as small as Lewis is, I doubt if you had 2,000 blacks in the whole town, if that. That's putting it high. And all of a sudden, they picked me out. <laughs> I think that looks like me right there. You were segregated. In other words, and if you went to the restroom, they had a restroom for whites and they had a restroom for black. You couldn't sit at the food counter. And you had to ride in the back of the bus and the back of the train. That was just life. That's the way the United States was. We were segregated. But the thing that got me, I wanted to go in the Navy. Only thing the blacks can go in is the army. And so I ended up in the army. We were not on the line. We were behind the line, driving trucks, cooking, unloading ships, and so forth. And so that's it. So you did the same thing in the service that you did in, in life. Servitude. You were in servitude. This was when I was 19. Trim one. <laughs> Have you seen the story of the duck yet? No, you didn't know anything about it. This is me driving that duck in La Havre, France. At that time, amphibian truck had just been organized. They would just come out with it. Most of the duck outfits were black soldiers. And most of us were drivers. And the duck, you see, could come right out of the water, right on land up to the front line. They wouldn't give us a machine gun on the, on the, on the duck. You're supposed to have a machine gunner and a driver, but they didn't trust blacks with, with ammunition, so you didn't have a machine gunner. So you were out there by yourself. They sent us to England, Porth Call. We went from England to Omaha Beach. Omaha Beach, you went through Europe. After Europe, you went down to Panama Canal. Then they sent you over to Manila. I was in Yokohama. Overnight, Truman bombed Hiroshima. I deem this reply a full acceptance of the Potsdam Declaration, which specifies the unconditional surrender of Japan. And they come in and shook me and said, wake up, man, the war is over. You go home there. And when they got to Seattle, Washington, they said all black troops in the last four cars. I said, I'm home. <laughs> <laughs> It's just like now, you got your immigrants over there, and uh, there are those people, see, they're second class, and they don't, you don't count. The system was still segregated until they passed that law to integrate. When Truman integrated the services, then you could go in the Marines, you could go in the Navy, you could go in the Air Force. Having served in the Army has been a big opportunity for me because I've gotten where I am now. I love my country. I wouldn't give up the United States. Who else I'm going? There's no place like this country. <laughs>